Hello everybody. Welcome to Friday afternoon with me, Sheep Happens. And um, it's been a very crazy week this week. Um, crazy, crazier than last week in some ways. And, uh, and I can't hardly believe that we're back here. And last week, um, one of the things I wanted to do was uh, look into um, metal that was perhaps influenced with some Native American um, flutes or some sort of background and dug into that a little bit and probably by next week I'll have a couple of things out there but you guys are welcome to go ahead and share with. And um, hey Mary Lou, good to see you this afternoon and Martine, uh, good to see you this afternoon. Um, so, music aside, uh, how's your week been? Um, here in the Nashville area, it's been a little crazy. Our, our weather has been uh, warmer than usual, which is uh, a nice little fall break. And um, our homeless ministry is facing some interesting challenges with the stuff that happens, like um, our transportation methods requiring repair, that kind of thing. Uh, nothing that's untoward or anything else, but it requires time and effort and uh, attention. And uh, the guys who do it every single day are taking care of that mostly. But have you noticed that when lots of things go awry during the week, it's hard to keep your concentration on what you might want to do with a larger project? And for me, that larger project is... Uh, one of them anyway, is talking with you guys on uh, Friday afternoons. Hey, Charlie, good to see you. And Andrew, uh, good to see you as well. And Chris, gosh, everybody's checking in for a little bit. Um, <laughs> Andrew Lathan, you're shopping for deck stain. You know what? We, my husband and I are as well, although we're not really shopping anymore for it. We know what we're going to do. Um, we're in the process of getting the darn deck ready for it, but uh, happy shopping. Hi, Edward Carter. Welcome. Um, so what's been going on with your week? Have you had some challenges? Perhaps a vehicle hasn't been working the way it ought, or you've had a medical challenge of some kind, or maybe a, an emotional challenge of some kind. Here we are in the... Uh, middle to the, towards the end of October. It's the beginning of the holiday season. Um, why would I say that? Well, I typically think of the holiday season to include, you know, um, in the U US our Thanksgiving time, which runs at the end of uh, the end of November. And then of course, the Christmas slash winter holiday, which includes the entire month of December and part of January. Um, it includes a lot of, of time and space and it's not just uh, not just a fabrication of our minds um, many of you may have noticed already the <laughs> whatever stores you may have been populating playing Christmas music already um, if you celebrate the concept of Halloween and uh, trick-or-treating those things are already on sale and uh, have been moved aside for the more fall harvesty type of things for the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, and, you know, it's hard to even believe that here we are. Uh, the year is dragged on and blown by so quickly, depending upon what state of mind you're in. And, and here we are pushed up against um, one of the most stressful times of year. Um, <laughs> Edward, Denver is getting snow tomorrow. Well, you know, that would be awesome for everybody that's been having to deal with the uh, smoke from, from the wildfires. Um, so snow would be a good thing. And um, no, Andrew, I haven't listened to the whole thing because, of course, it's three hours, but I started it. Thank you for that link. Um, hi, Sandy. Good to see you this afternoon. So holiday season coming up upon us and what are some of the things that happen during the holiday season besides the intense pressure of having the time of your life or preparing to show people the time of their life um, the kinds of things that that burrow in on our on our heart 
for others. Um, you know, at this time of year, a lot of people go out of their way to find a way to serve others on one or two days, you know, perhaps on a Thanksgiving or a Christmas holiday. And that's true, not just in the United States, but in other countries as well. Um, you know, thinking about doing for others uh, at a time of year when um, they might be without. And of course, isn't that true for every day? <laughs> every day for those who are without, they're without, regardless if it's, it's a holiday or not. Um, I wonder if we could get ourselves to be moved in such a way that we think like that all the time. Now, a good many of you do. You're, you already participate in a regular basis in servicing your brothers and sisters in Christ and those who are not, uh, and projecting God's love onto people and situations. But we all know that we could do better ourselves, and we all know people in our lives who are not motivated to do that, except maybe once a year. And what are some of the things we can do to change that, to change it so that it's a way of thinking on a regular basis? We've talked over the many weeks that we've come together and shared about ways for us to improve our vertical relationship with Jesus Christ, reading the Bible, reading his word, maybe reading it in different translations so that um, we might be moved or motivated in a different way that we haven't before over the same passages, praying for and with one another, um, uh, spending time on improving those relationships. Well, actively practicing engaging with others to service others is, is also something that we, we can do and more than just during the holidays. In fact, making it an annual thing to do something different. Like the homeless ministry here in Nashville, we have Christmas in July. And Christmas in July, you know, I realize that's become kind of a thing now, but it's not always been a thing. It's a thing here. And um, being able to get together and really feel the camaraderie and the love for one another. And, um, sort of a special exuberance, something to look forward to in the middle of the year when there's not generally anything to look forward to. Um, that's, that's kind of a beautiful concept and one that we could do on a regular basis. Uh, so what kind of thing could, could you do, could I do, to um, change people's perspectives on that? Um, it seems so difficult to find a time to carve out to do just one more thing, right? But perhaps in your town, there is just one more thing you could do, even if it's something simple. Uh, something as simple as uh, going to a fast food place and um, picking up some inexpensive meals and delivering them to those who might not otherwise have something to eat. Or perhaps gathering together with neighbors and um, taking up uh, some supplies in, um, you know, some coffee or pastries or something to your local fire station or your police station, showing your community support for those who service you on a regular basis. There's hundreds of ways to be different about it and do it on your own and with other people, but are we doing that regularly and frequently? Do we share our blessings with others? Um, the other day I was in, uh, in a parking lot. I drove in, I had ordered, uh, um, on my phone, uh, an order to pick up and I drove in and there was a gentleman in a vehicle in front of me parked in smack dab in the middle of the entire parking lot. Not really in line for where I was going, not really out of line for where I was going and in the way of everybody pulling in and moving out. Anyway, I sat there for a little bit and then the vehicle 
in front of him, but not really in front of him, but in the line, moved forward, and he didn't move. So I pulled around him and moved in. That immediately elicited this just raucous honking from him. So apparently um, I had misjudged his intent, and he was intending to be in front of me. He was very upset. Um, and when I got up to the window, I asked if he already paid for his order, and I paid for him. It was not my intention to put myself in, in front of him, um, but I had hoped that, and it may not have made any difference, but I hope that maybe the next time you can give the benefit of the doubt that somebody wouldn't deliberately be trying to hurt him. Now, is that our response when people pull in front of us, when people seemingly don't notice us, don't take care to pay attention to us in a way that we expect. Do we respond with love and kindness and benefit of the doubt or do we, we judge and get angry and frustrated and make sure they know that? These little things that happen to us during each day um, make a big difference for us in how our hearts can expand and be able to encompass much larger uh, demonstrations of our heart for the Lord. Is it necessary for us to be giving to others in large groups? Necessary? No, no, not necessary. Is it your desire? Because if it is your desire, then for you, it should also be necessary. Everybody gifts in different ways. God speaks to us differently in how we spend our time. But not a one of us, not one of us gets to wander through life without being called to help our brothers and sisters in Christ and those who have not come yet to know him. This is a big deal. And I really am interested in how you might how you might be giving to others. Some people have Facebook pages, personal pages, and they um, share their musical gifts online with others. There's a couple uh, in Hawaii that does a little gig called uh, Seven at Seven on Wednesdays. And they do seven songs, and they've started um, writing a song each week using um, input from the participants uh, who come to join them on their night. Um, creating a fun environment and promoting love and promoting uh, interaction and networking in a way that has nothing to do with politics or religion it has everything to do with just spending time with each other. What a what an amazing and beautiful thing, right? Hey, Mike Trichell, I am so glad to see you this afternoon. Um, so perhaps some of you are doing similar things. I know Dwayne out there, I don't know if he's here today, but he loves to post very comedic and funny things on his Facebook page. Um, and he gets a big hoo-ha out of me most days, sometimes more than once in a day. Because it's a great, interesting way to share a funny take on life that doesn't have anything to do with um, the obligations that we each have when we get up in the morning until we go to sleep. How nice for each of us to share time with each other that's not uh, focused on cleaning our homes, cleaning our cars, going to work, actually working, leaving work, picking children up, feeding children. Um, feeding homeless, feeding anybody. How, how nice to have some interaction with each other where it's for things that bring a little spring to our step, a little love to our heart, a little uh, enthusiasm for whatever the next thing is going to be. Could be something simple as uh, watching a YouTube video. An individual here, uh, Andrew, has shared that with a few of us, and it's a really long one, so um, I have to carve some more time out to finish it. But being able to share little bits of our lives with each other so that we can relate 
and we have a point of, of um, commonality. Whether we agree about something or whether it piques further questions, having these kinds of little interactions are so important. Oh, anybody doing anything out there that is like that? Um, it might not be on a social media page. It might be just in your hometown. Maybe you participate in something locally. You're, maybe you go and visit um, seniors uh, from the exterior window these days because most of the facilities that house our, our elderly uh, do not allow um, visitors. But for those who do, whether you have a family member or a friend in the facility or not, I know that uh, if I live long enough and end up living in a facility, um, I don't have any children of my own. So I'd be dependent upon the goodwill of my nieces, my nephews, my goddaughter, friends of theirs, friends of mine, to come by and visit me or go without visiting. I mean, what a huge difference. Maybe you go and call bingo for those who are in a nursing home or a senior facility. Maybe you send up a pizza to the nursing staff at a children's hospital. Uh, they're just, there's no end to weird things that we could do, fun things that we could do that bring a blessing to others. Um, and anonymously, nobody needs to know that you're doing it. That's not important. God knows, and you know, and that's really all that's necessary. Um, what other kinds of things? Uh, maybe in your neighborhood, somebody needs some help getting the leaves off their lawn or cleaning out their gutters or who the heck knows, but all of us, if we are living in, in a neighborhood, have neighbors that, that are going to be elderly and potentially in need or perhaps disabled or maybe just maxed in the amount of time they have. A single parent trying to raise some kids and trying to find the time to do stuff. Pulling together to bless others, whether we are affirmed by them or not, is so important to the growth of our heart and the growth of our spirit and to recharge our spirit inside of us. Hey, Tammy Heron, I'm, I, I would like to bless my wait staff at restaurants. Oh, yes, you do. I feel they need some love. Um, or the lady, Julie, who cuts my fabric at uh, Hobby Lobby. Well, there you go. That's wonderful. And Mike says, we like to go sing for some of the facilities here and love sitting in the front yard with guitars and singing and having neighbors show up and just sit with us. So awesome, Mike. That's really a wonderful thing. Um, I have a girlfriend out in the San Francisco area that her husband He's not, he, I mean, he, he works for a living, but he happens to be somewhat talented with a guitar and singing, and he has uh, set up a little shop with his garage door open out on his um, driveway for his neighbors once a week for the last, gosh, for several months now. Um, it just out there singing and people singing along and, and being able to relate to each other and have fun. In the Nashville area, back in the spring, we had this howling, the eight o'clock howl. Um, for those of you who have Facebook, you probably could Google it. We were not the only city that had this. And um, it grew and grew, and eventually they did a cutoff for it. But every night at eight o'clock, people would go outdoors and howl. And um, apparently, it was very cathartic and enjoyable, and people began to relate their stories about it and and um, take pictures and share videos and other things. And guess what? They got to know each other. They were actually outside meeting their neighbors, talking about things after the howl that started to matter in each other's lives, caring for children, um, play dates for kids, uh, meals for each other. Very, very neat to be able to do that kind of stuff. 
what other kinds of things? You know, maybe you like to play games. Uh, we have that game called Cornhole here in the South. I've never heard of it before, but it's um, large wooden platforms with a hole in the middle and people toss bean bags from yards away at opposing things. You can play that social distancing and, um, and have good conversations over it with a little competition. You, you're getting up, you're moving around, you're having fun. Um, you could probably even do it indoors with a slightly smaller version of it or just have a couple of buckets and things to toss into the bucket. Can't quite slide as much, but the purpose is to interact and share time with each other. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, I am Frisbee golf, yes, another really fun one, and out, outdoors as well. I'm talking about this stuff because we've been isolated as a people now for months. And a lot of us got used to, in the summertime, being able to be outdoors, feeling comfortable being outdoors, talking to each other, being near each other and not experiencing quite the same level of judgment about whether we have a mask on or don't have a mask on because we're outdoors. But the winter months are coming upon us here in the Northern Hemisphere. And as you in the Southern Hemisphere are starting to move into being able to be outdoors, we are starting to have to close up here as our temperatures are going to change and um, it won't be comfortable to be out in quite the same way. Nor can we count on being out for long periods of time sitting outside unless we're out in snow, shoot, snow suits or something like that. You know, just sitting on the porch isn't comfortable if you don't have a fire going <laughs> once it gets cold enough. So what do we do? Well, usually we get together inside. And this is a time where we get together with each other to celebrate all kinds of things, including traditional Christmases for those who share Santa Claus in their homes and the various things that work around that and gift giving and holiday festivities and uh, work parties and neighborhood parties and family parties. Um, my guess is a lot of those aren't going to happen this year. I, I don't know if we're going to all Zoom with each other or some other method of reaching out, but it's gonna be different this year. People are going to be less willing to travel. Now, I have been on a plane since, um, since the COVID lockdown. I'm gonna get on a plane again next week and uh, go visit my mother who needs some medical stuff. I, I'm not afraid of being on the, on the plane with other people. I am complying because they won't let me on the plane. If I can't, if I don't comply, I wear a mask and I'll do everything that I can so that I'm not, so that I don't get sick and transfer something to my mother. Um, but God's, God already knows what's going on in my life. I'm not going to deliberately go out and try to catch a virus flu, COVID, or anything else. Um, I've never, when people show up and they're sniffling and sick, I'm, I'm never really like, hey, get up in my face. I'd like to catch that. I'm usually like, go home and take care of yourself. Um, and I, I don't feel differently about COVID. If you're sick, go home and take care of yourself. And um, there are lots of us who have been exposed to viruses and um, not really known we were having um, an illness and probably passed it on to others, not just COVID. Uh, but you're going to be dealing with this, right? You've got families, people have generational groupings of families. And um, if you've got anybody in a facility, there's the whole thing. If they leave the facility, they, they have to isolate when they return. Very different kind of thinking, right? So complex, a lot more layers to navigate through the holidays. So I, my thought was, as these times are approaching, maybe what we start to do is spread out the things we do with our family and friends so that they're not so concentrated on just December the 25th or just the third Thursday in, 
in um, uh, November for the Thanksgiving holiday in the U.S. And of course around the world there are several countries that have similar types of winter holidays that are national holidays where they are. And your families all get together. So how about doing something where we spread it out and make, make the year a little more celebratory, make our family memories and our time with each other um, important on a broader scale. Why do we limit ourselves to collectively coming together around the birth of Jesus? He was born so that he could save us. He died and did save us. And we can certainly collectively gather ourselves together on a more regular basis to have conversations about that and create memories that don't just surround a tree and presents or whatever other holiday things your families do. And I don't mean to downplay those things. I have fabulous memories of trimming the tree when I was a kid and um, the hand knit stockings that my mom and my grandmother made for um, all of the members of our family. And even after we um, got married, my, my mom continued that tradition for the people who married into the family. Um, I have great memories of walking the aisles in stores with my dad to uh, pick out things for my mother's Christmas stocking. Um, and I did from a pretty young age, well into my 20s. Great time, to, we, it wasn't about filling your stocking, although that was the focus of it, but the conversations that I was able to have with my dad about so many different kinds of things going on in his life, my life, the life of our family, real memories made. What if you were to have some traditions that revolved around something a little different and spread throughout the year? And maybe some of you already do. Maybe some of you have some fun things. Um, you know, there's always Easter, of course. <laughs> but what if you were to do something different for birthdays? Figure out a different way to celebrate a birthday from afar or socially that's still meaningful and um, perhaps we get back into means of communication that are old style like writing a letter a physical letter that goes through the mail with a stamp um, a physical card that goes through the mail with a stamp and it's delivered to somebody it shows that you're thinking about them in a different way and again it's not a judgment to say that texting isn't as good or face timing or Skyping isn't good, but we have gotten so used to communicating with each other in these instant ways. Um, they, aren't, they aren't special in the way that they once were when they were new. And some of the old fashioned ways are now special because they're hardly used anymore. Um, people now, when you go to a, a memorial, there's usually a video of the entire life and um, a lot of it is a, a, a presentation that's set up to touch our emotions. Uh, but but we, we don't allow for the, the personal interchange of stories told by the people in attendance. Um, what are some of your cool memories that you, you, you think about now? Um, Pastor Bob Adams, he, he has been sharing recently uh, his memories about his mother. And she passed a couple of years ago and his family has developed a couple of things that they do. Um, that they get together to help them spend time and create memories together. Um, into the future, yes, it's based upon a, a hole and a sadness that they have in common, but yet 
each time they gather together to remember this lost one in their family, they're also creating new memories. Jess, you say, my family is touchy touchy. Hugs and kisses is how we communicate with each other and it feels weird not to be able to do it as much. Oh, I bet. Now, that's true for so many people. Um, and let's, let's explore that a little bit. Ways to be touchy when you can't actually touch. Now, my mom is not touchy touchy, but in the last few years, whenever we come together and we haven't seen each other, she has really wanted a hug. Um, and that's been very difficult because we're not together to hug anymore, right? And, um, and even where she lives, they're supposed to sort of stay away from each other about six feet and not really touch and hug. And of course, those who do, uh, yeah, they sort of do it behind the scenes and um, ways that we can do it. All right, so there are ways, the whole full on frontal hug, big smoochy kiss on the face or the lips, that kind of thing. Maybe not so much right now, if that's, you know, you don't wanna make people uncomfortable. Um, but physical touch is physical touch. And we certainly can transmit meaning through soulful looks through our eyes to each other, like right into the eyes of the person. Um, touching of the backs of your hands if you're afraid to touch hands together. Uh, reaching out on a forehand, forearm or a shoulder. Um, standing shoulder to shoulder but standing next to each other. And taking a pause as you're having those moments to register that there is physical touch occurring and that this is a person that you love and care for or that you're maybe trying to offer solace to or encouragement to. Um, there, there aren't, there's no ends of ways to be creative and we do not need to go without touch. Um, yeah, who else? Mike, Mike Trichel says, yes, uh, same. And yeah, you're not alone. So many people are, are that way. This is where other things that we might have taken for granted. You know, when we lose a sense of smell, what more commonly as we age, maybe our eyesight diminishes or our hearing diminishes in ways that we valued before of being able to be in communication with each other, deep communication that's meaningful and, and it's taken away from us. Perhaps a lively conversation can no longer be a part of our our, our time together because I simply can't hear you well enough anymore and my reading of lips isn't sufficient and so I have no idea exactly what you're saying and I can only really follow one person at a time and if I'm not, my mind isn't super sharp, I might not even be able to figure out what you're saying because my brain is superimposing over those words, stuff that's going on in my own head. So I don't, I might be really extroverted and love to be with people and yet I'm not able to enjoy those, in, those gatherings anymore because I can't hear. The onus is on us, of course, if we can't hear or see or smell or feel. The onus is on us to figure out how to change our perception about that. There are ways to be with people and enjoy conversations if we will ask for what we need. Being vulnerable, telling somebody, I'm hard of hearing. I need you to speak more slowly and it would be wonderful if everybody could speak one at a time. And why wouldn't we want to do that? I'm totally guilty of this. I grew up in a family that everybody's a talker, everybody has something to say, everybody's got an opinion, and nobody means to cut somebody off, but you know, you gotta be quick on the draw in my family at a holiday to get a word in edgewise, as my husband will 
confirm. Um, and a good portion of his family is that way too, even though he's, he's, that's not his thing. He prefers one at a time and to contemplate what's being said and engage one at a time. But how many of us go out to dinner with people or even in our own families and there's a conversation going on over here and two of us over to the side might start another conversation and the next thing you know, it's just this cacophony of noise and anybody who's hard of hearing is not gonna be able to keep up with that or enjoy it. So the dynamics of, you know, we've, we've been forced now to have to evaluate how do we feel like we're together when we're not able to touch each other and feel together. Well, this is something that's been forced on all of us, but how about those of us who have suffered that way for a while with hearing or seeing in some fashion and nobody's paid attention to that? Wonderful things to make a difference. So speaking one-on-one, -on -one, really reaching out to people, super important. Let's see, there's a bunch of comments here. Let's see, Tammy says, been giving my mom and dad air hugs and she's starting to give them back. That is awesome. <laughs> dad, not so much. Well, that's okay. He's, I know he appreciates it and um, that's great. Go Tammy's mom. Um, Mike, yes, she'll come around. Um, Yes, all the talk at once ends up like sounding like the teachers in Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 wah. That's totally true. Um, it is difficult. So the air hugs are a great idea. Another thing that's mattered since we aren't seeing each other in person so much anymore is being able to use the blessings of, of the social media and various apps available to us on our phones, our iPads, or other things that allow us to visually see each other. So to be able to do a real-time talk while we're looking at each other, um, that's so helpful, especially for people who are hard of hearing, so they can see your lips moving. And then there's just the tenderness that's available. You could just sit there and look at each other. Um, you know, my mom and I can be together and not say anything for a long time, and it's totally okay. <laughs> and I'm sure there's people who would find that difficult to believe who know both of us since we're both chatty. Um, but we can, and uh, it's comfortable. I know she appreciates being able to uh, see my face and I noticed that she's getting much better at taking pictures of things and sharing those with myself and my sisters at my request because we have been doing that with her repeatedly and she's experienced being the beneficiary of having that extra thing to, to, to grab onto. Now we can certainly send physical pictures to families and friends um, or drawings. When was the last time, you know, when we're five or six, we're drawing stuff, giving it to mom and dad, giving it to grandma and grandpa. Is there any reason that we can't be drawing something now and sending it to them? Why not? I love you <laughs> with a tree or something. I mean, why not? Something special. Uh, just from you to that person in your life that you're hoping to, to touch base to. Or for those who are without. You know, Mike Truchell talked about facilities that he's able to go and um, sit in front and do music. Uh, where my mom lives, the musicians come and they play on each side of the building for a set amount of time on certain days so that everybody in the building gets to experience the music as much as they can close up. What if you were to deliver a bunch of hand written or hand drawings that said you loved them? How special. It could be a flower. I mean, I'm not really all that gifted in the drawing department, but um, I'm gifted enough to be able to draw something like that and send it in. It does, they don't have to keep it. It just tells them they're being thought of. 
And if you're thinking of people, why not take the time to let them know that? Yeah, Mike says, just the presence of your presence is all that it takes a lot of the time. That's absolutely true. The, your time. Now, quality time is not everybody's heart fluttering thing. It's mine. Um, mine is quality time. And the other thing I really value is acts of service. Mostly me doing them. But uh, I don't expect other people to know my uh, how I'm wired, so I'm not expecting them to show me in my love language what I'm hoping for is that I will be smart enough and intuitive enough and caring enough to, to know what somebody else's love languages are so that I can recognize when they're showing love to me or other people. Um, but giving your quality time in whatever facet that could be. How about just at the grocery store? Noticing somebody who might need a little extra help. Everybody's so afraid. And I realize a lot of people are ordering their stuff and driving through and getting it. But there's still a number of people that go to the store and uh, struggle to get their things out to their car and, and, and in, into their car. And if you can be of help there, what a blessing. Or in your neighborhood, if somebody is elderly or has a hard time getting out to get their, their errands done. There are ways to organize within social media to make your, your, uh, yourself available if you want to do that for others. But you can see there's so many things. And um, go, Mike's saying now, go to, specific, go to the windows of specific people out in front with the PA speakers. There you go, that's, that's what's happening at my mom's place. <laughs> And in fact, um, at last time I was there, I made the suggestion that they let the musicians know if it was somebody's birthday inside so that they could actually do exactly that, Mike, go outside the window of that person and sing happy birthday. And I guess they've been doing that since. So each week, you know, people are getting that extra special care. Um, I, I am terrible about remembering to tell people happy birthday. I see it and it feels like a, uh, a tough thing to have to do that except for immediate family members. I don't know why it doesn't take any time at all except for that, um, you know, the expectations that people will read 500 happy birthday wishes on Facebook is not a big deal. But for those who really feel like those words are affirming to them, these, these little things matter. And we, we definitely want to be attentive when we can. So yeah, music outside for people, helping people in the parking lot, ways we can show each other that we still care, that we're still there for each other. People in the neighborhood, maybe taking an afternoon, making, scheduling an afternoon to visit one or two people in your neighborhood that you know don't get regular visitors or maybe you don't even know them yet so to introduce yourself and get to know each other um, having some time in your neighborhood with chairs out talking to each other uh, getting in the neighborhood walking with each other spending some time you know chatting while you do walks with social distancing, if that's important. Spending time with people. Spending time with your people. We often live in so many places. When you live in a neighborhood, you don't even know your neighbors. That's not unusual anymore. Um, you know, when my dad was growing up in and my grandfather, his dad, grew up. They lived in these neighborhoods. Um, everybody lived in a house, and there was a garden and a yard and all that. But uh, people knew everybody. Maybe a little too much. They were in each other's business. My great-grandmother translated for a lot of people in her very international neighborhood in Berkeley, California. And 
she was a native French speaker, but she learned English and Chinese and Spanish. And she knew seven languages. I don't know all of them. She passed before I was old enough to have a relationship with her. But, you know, they knew what was going on in the neighborhood. They knew the kids in the neighborhood. The kids knew her. And people relied on each other in the neighborhood. We've gotten away from that. We're very independent and we don't want to be vulnerable with anybody. We don't want to be embarrassed. We don't want people to know what we perceive to be our true hearts, that it might be something shocking and um, or they might think ill of us or somebody might take a piece of information and stretch it and make it and malign it in such a fashion that it would be used against us. We have become so withdrawn and unwilling to just live our lives transparently with each other. We're too consumed with worry about things that we don't have any control over anyway. But we think we do. We think if we stay introverted, if we stay in a box, if we don't share ourselves, that somehow we're in control of what can be said about us or thought about us. Well, I've got news for you. That is untrue. People will make up stories anyway. There must be a reason that you're either appearing to be too perfect or too introverted or not this or not that. So go forth, live some life, get to know people in your neighborhood, get to know other people in your life at work, share some of yourself, be transparent. If people are gonna think things about you, let them be based on who you are and the truth that you live and not the hidden qualities that they can only imagine. Jessica says we have to create a culture of community. There, perfect. And that happens one at a time, right? We're going to go, for those of us living in the United States, and vote in the next week or two. Some people have already voted. I will be away from the poll on the day of ele the election, so I will be voting early next week. And these are... There's very few things that I'm voting on at this point that are local. There just isn't much up that's local, a couple of things, and not very much local. But we do have council people and all kinds of things that come up in between these big elections that are as important, if not more important, because these small decisions we make and the community that we cultivate is what matters. It's what multiplies. It's what extends itself beyond our immediate bubble into a regional bubble and then a national bubble and a global bubble. You want to make a difference? Well, that's a choice. Make a difference. You want to share with your family that you love them? It's a choice. Share it. If they're uncomfortable with how you normally share love, come up with a different thing. It doesn't matter what people think. It matters what's in your heart and what you do. When I say it doesn't matter what they think, I'm saying it doesn't need to affect you in a negative way. If somebody misunderstands your love or mocks it or responds to it in a way that isn't loving, what matters is you've told somebody you love them. It, you've told somebody you care about them. You've taken action to show that you are spreading God's good news through your action singing, dancing, frolicking, hiking, doing a good deed. Oh yeah, I know it's a federal crime to put something inside somebody's mailbox. So I'm not gonna tell you to go out and commit a federal crime, but I, I will say I have been known to put things in people's mailboxes that I guarantee you they didn't think it was a crime when they opened it and found what was in their mailbox.
Put it on their doorstep. Do it when they don't see you. Don't expect things in return. Give without strings. Create memories without strings. Propose new ideas to your family and friends to get together and gather without strings. You don't know what you might suggest, how that will be received, or the creative trigger it might create. You might have some idea that you really need to replace something that's been taken away from you during this pandemic -y time. Don't control it inside of a box with a set of strings. Approach it with this open, armed, palms up concept that whatever you get rolling, whatever stone you push and you start rolling, that others will join behind you. And they'll either roll it in the same direction or they'll come up with other ideas that could definitely enhance what you're doing but it won't detract because you're not doing it for affirmation you're doing it because you love people and you want to create memories these kinds of challenges the pandemic the year of the pandemic okay so it'll be more than a year because there's no pandemic that's been on earth that was just one year um, the year of the pandemic for everybody that has a, the ability and the mind that's developed enough to have a memory, you won't need much more than just mentioning that to come up with a ton of memories, right? When you take vacations, you don't remember the smooth drive that went great. What you remember is when your transmission blew up and you had to rent a car and tow your car somewhere. That's the story. So what are you gonna do this year for the holidays? That'll be a story to tell. Is it sufficient to you? I, we just didn't get together because it was a pandemic. Or are there ways for us to be together and do something this year? Maybe it'll be the only time we do it, just this one time. Maybe it'll be something that we'll do ongoing or maybe it'll be something that'll give birth to something bigger and different but if you haven't started thinking about it you should because it's here we're up against it <laughs> we're, we're at the threshold of the holidays perhaps they can be simpler this year if you've always wished you didn't have those gift exchanges, this is a great year for that to change. How about the gift of exhortation, not the critical one? How about the gift of encouragement, a written note of all the reasons somebody's important to you? Something they'll probably fold up and put in their wallet or on their mirror and read over and over again that will stay with them for a lifetime, not a season. Memories. Acts of service. Sharing God's love. Being there for those who don't even know we're around. Being there because we're a vessel of God's to, to transmit his love without any acknowledgement of us whatsoever. These are going to change your life. They're going to transform you. They're going to transform me in ways we can't know. We've already been transformed this year. There's not one of us that has had, you know, the last seven months without something that's been life-changing. 
you might end up having people in, in your family that are having medical challenges. I'm not talking about COVID. I'm talking just about being lonely, feeling vulnerable, and living with the stress of fear because not everybody seems to be okay knowing God's in charge. Bring the blessing of connectivity, of happiness, of joy to those in your immediate circle, those in your neighborhood, those in your community, and those in your extended circle. You, personally, me, personally, let us be light. Dwayne says, they should call this the fake-demic instead of the, the pandemic. Well, yeah, and I think a lot of people do. And Mike, being that invisible beating heart of the love of God just because no notice, just giving in hidden creative ways. Oh, so, so true. Creative ways to give. God's blessing to us. Jessica says, I just want to be on one couch with all my siblings this Christmas. I'm a simple woman. Well, I pray for that for you, and I hope that that happens for you. But if not, I hope you're on the couch with people who will feel as blessed by your presence and your willingness to be there with them. And I hope and pray for that for all of us. Now, just in case you thought I forgot about Native American influence on metal Christian music, I have not forgotten about it. Um, but I did have a crazy, crazy week. And so I have not completed what I was working on. <laughs> so it'll come to you when I'm, when I'm done with it. But I just wanted, in case it was percolating in the back of any of your minds, it's not forgotten. I hope all of you have a wonderful week. And I'm very excited to have this be a different season for my family and for you and your families. And for those who we don't yet call family, but who are our family, our brothers and sisters, who need to know that there's somebody there. We have a tremendous number of aged individuals in all of our communities who have not a soul for them. If you can find time in your day, in your heart, to write a note or two or ten and drop them off at a facility for them to be delivered, uh, the administrative staff's beck and call of whatever whoever they think would benefit, go for it. Make a difference. Make a habit of it. Create a coffee club that meets and y'all do it together and then go drop them off together. And you don't have to meet in person. You can Zoom meeting together. We can have times with where, where we're doing it together and, and we won't miss it because we set aside, we set aside the time and, and uh, met up to do that. Any other great ideas you guys get? Share them, please. Let's make this bigger than us and uh, let's go forth with really full hearts. Love you so much. God bless each one of you. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.